<laughs> this isn't what you'd expect a nervous first-time mom to sound like. She should be sleep-deprived, anxious, worried, right? At the Christ Hospital Health Network, we try to build trust, give honesty and levity in equal measure, so you can ask any question, share any experience with someone who understands, someone that doesn't just sound like a doctor, but like a friend. The Christ Hospital Health Network, everything it takes. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 815, Amanda's Diary, Transformations. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. What up, homies? How you doing? I am Amanda Valentine. Welcome to the Pound This Podcast. It is another diary episode, and so soon from the last one, <laughs> uh, which I'm going to talk about transformations and some updates from the last podcast, because I know in the last podcast, I was talking about what's going on with me. So heads up, if you want to listen to this episode, this is an update on what is going on in my life, which is actually, you know, very busy right now. <laughs> Lots of crazy stuff going on, um, including some health and wellness stuff I'll chat about here too. Um, and then I know in the last podcast I had talked about like, oh, should I end the podcast? Are you guys feeling this or whatever? So I want to discuss that as well. But before I want to get to that, I want to talk to you about two very important things in my life. One is Sarah and team fit with me. Sarah is amazing. If you are looking for a health coach, if you're looking for a motivator, if you are looking for someone to crush your goals, Sarah is that person, including her whole entire team. And especially if you are looking to lose weight, if that is something that you have struggled with and you've tried it a million different ways and it doesn't freaking work, yo, been there. Sarah will get that on lockdown for you. So she will look through all of your stuff. You'll, she can do labs if you want. She's going to look at everything, the whole picture, your sleep, your stress. What are you eating? What's your poop look like? <laughs> so if you want to work with somebody that's really going to help you reach those goals, keep, keep you accountable, really look into Sarah. And now she's offering more affordable options as well as financing. So if you've looked into coaching with Sarah before and it's like, this just doesn't fit my budget, she's got new options now. She can fully customize your goals and budget. And all you got to do is go to teamfitwithme.com to complete your customized coaching application. And then she can help you from there. So if you're like, oh, I can't afford this. I'm not even going to look into it. Just scratch that out. Go check into it. Have a conversation. The worst thing that's going to happen is be like, this isn't a good fit. But if you're listening to this and you're concerned about your health and you want to work on it in some way and you want somebody that can help you, she's virtual. She can help you anywhere. Then go to teamfitwithme.com and look into Sarah because she is awesome. Also, I want to talk to you about Clean Eats, which has been a lifesaver for me in the past year of job changes and divorce. Um giving me a personal break from doing all my meal prepping because I've been meal prepping for like a decade and I do love meal prepping. But when life gets crazy, man, it's, it's, something's got to go. And that, that went for me. And that's why the clean eats has been such a lifesaver. There's no month to month membership or anything like that. It's just order as you go. If you want the fresh meals, I do personally 21 meals a week. You don't have to do that many. You can just do breakfast or lunch or whatever. And you just go online, you pick what you want, you order it. You can pay online or pay in the store and then you go pick it up on Sunday or Monday. And that's pretty easy. Or you can go in and there's tons of frozen options, including extra protein, low carb, vegetarian. There's like the big family dinners if you want to cook for your family. Their cauliflower pizza is bomb. Um, so definitely go, if you're in the Cincinnati area, check out Clean Eats in Newport. They are amazing. Just even if you're just going to try it out and you want things to be more convenient and easy to you. Like even if you know like, hey, I'm coming back from vacation, then I don't feel like cooking or thinking about it this week. Just go pick up some meals and try it out. You know what I mean? So definitely check out Clean Eats in Newport. Um, so both of those guys are amazing. Um, I know for so many people on their journeys, but definitely for me and in, in my journey, and I guess kind of where I want to like lead them into the next part of this conversation for me in my diary episode is um, I've had an offer accepted on a house. So um I'm selling my house this year. It's part of my divorce agreement. 
um, to sell my house and move. And so this housing market is stupid. It is awful. I mean, it's going to hopefully be cool for me as a seller. Let me know if you want to buy my house. (laughs) The kitchen is awesome. It's perfect for meal prepping. (laughs) So my house is probably going to go on the market in like a month or so, but I just went through this whole process of um, inspections and all that other fun stuff for for this other house and moving to a completely different part of town. Um, And I have to say, and this is good. I am probably totally going to cry here. I'm already crying. Oh, my God. And I'm also about to start my period any minute. So I knew I was going to freaking cry. But this is a happy cry um, because the reason I could. So I couldn't sell my house first because then I would be homeless because this housing market is so bonkers. Um, So I'm like, I have to be able to get another house first so I can make sure there's a place for me and my four animals to live. And um, it's been very challenging. And it's funny because um, I'm also my started my new job a week and a half ago at the Cincinnati Nature Center. I'll talk about that here in a second, too. Um, but I talked to multiple people there that also recently got houses and they're like, oh, my God, this market is just insane. And they put in like 10 different offers at 10 different places. So I feel like super lucky to get the place that I wanted. It's the exact place I wanted. It's perfect just for me and my little animals. Um but I, I'm like, I'm doing this um, on my own and without selling my house first. And so um, the only way that I could pull that off financially is with, <laughs> with um, money that I have made from this podcast. Um, so through my sponsors, like Christ Hospital and Sarah and Team Fit With Me and Clean Eats and those relationships that I have with them, um, definitely Christ Hospital. Christ Hospital has been, I got to keep this podcast because of Christ Hospital. So they're absolutely amazing and I will love them forever. Even if we don't continue to work together in the future or whatever, I mean, they, I wouldn't have been able to keep this podcast for the past three years. I would have had to end this podcast at the end of 2019 if it wouldn't have been for them. So having a sponsorship with them, um, in, I had to do a rev share for three years, um, so I didn't even get like the full money because I had to split it with the radio station, which was part of my deal to um, own this podcast. Um, just a little fun fact there. But because of the money that I've pulled in from having my own little business of having podcast sponsorships and people support me and like doing my event last year for my 40th birthday, my live my live podcast event, which I would love to do again. I just don't have the bandwidth for this year to do a big event like that again because I did that a lot on my own and that was aggressive. Um, just from like public speaking uh, events. And then when I did like um, health coaching and virtual health coaching and stuff like that. So the, the money that I've made from those is what made it possible for me to be, to be able to uh, purchase this house for myself, which does make me want to cry where I'm like, oh my God, I, like I created this thing. And like, I just went out on my own to just try to pursue health and wellness as some sort of career. And I wouldn't have known you know, after like <laughs> um, starting this journey off on my on my own with this podcast at the beginning of 2020, that I'm like, wow, three years later, this podcast I created and the relationships I created with it are going to be my my savior into starting this really big new chapter and being able to get a house on my own. So that is absolutely amazing, and that is also because of you listening to this podcast. Like, I wouldn't have been able to do any of that if no one listened to this podcast. So I appreciate you so much for listening because, I mean, obviously it is just changing my life in so many ways. Like, this podcast has just changed my life in so many ways, (laughs) which is why I won't stop doing it. (laughs) You know, it might change and, and fluctuate, but, man, it's just wild to me, like, how many friends I have that I've met because of this podcast and so many people I know and so many amazing stories and so many like things I have learned from having this podcast that this podcast has saved me so much of like having Sarah and Team Fit with me as my coach when I went on antidepressants in 2020 and just was really crashing from 
uh, from, you know, 2020. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I, I need some help. Please help me. And I could reach out. And then Sarah was my coach and like really helped me pull up, pull me out of stuff. And same thing with meeting with my doctor at Christ Hospital and having those conversations and b- having the discussion of whether or not I should go on medication. And I'm like, I had this really good relationship with them because of this podcast and met so many doctors. It's like, I, I changed my gynecologist because she was on my podcast. I'm like, I love you. You're awesome. Now you're going to see me with my pants off. <laughs> <laughs> that's how much i enjoyed having you on my podcast <laughs> saddle me up in them stirrups <laughs> but you know what i mean so like and I, I definitely went through this whole thing whenever i was going through all of this um if you listen to all these episodes which my god um around the end of 2020 2021 of like wow i created this as a resource for other people going through this health journey because it's so freaking hard and how much it's just really saved me um in so many ways and so and including this way of like you know you guys are listening and 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 it's it's a, it can be important and powerful that other people believe in it and believe in me and you know want to be a part of it in in you know many different ways, but in ways that like change my own mental and physical health and now are able to help me, um, get a house on my own. And also just like some backstory too. Like, I mean, I grew up a trailer park kid, so I like, I never lived in a house. And so, um, and then I just moved into like a babillion apartments, moving around, working in radio. So the house that I'm in currently it was the first house that I ever lived in. And obviously this is the first house I ever owned, but I'd like never lived in a house before. So like that was really big for me. It's also very hard for me to leave this house too. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> um, it's sad to leave, especially the kitchen. I mean, if you were followed me long enough that I renovated the kitchen on, <laughs> on uh, Facebook live in 2017 with my radio show. So, um, to get to like the you know dream kitchen that I wanted and to leave that a al- lot to leave that is hard a lot of things are hard but anyway um what was I talking about <laughs> um but god what was I talking about anyway you know like that yeah so having this house but then being able to like be able to purchase another house in a bonkers <laughs> housing market and be able to do it and, and do it on my own um, is also a very big milestone for me. And I think it's uh, part of my journey of this like self-love journey with my body and everything else has been like um, having a hard time being proud of myself a lot of the times. And it just like this makes me proud of myself. So that's really cool. So thank you so much for being a part of that because if you're listening to this, you are absolutely a part of that. I mean, I mean, I'm serious that I, I, you know, that (laughs) you've been a part of this journey for me and you're helping me. So hopefully my podcast helps you. And then this is, you know, how you're helping me back, which is awesome. So um, I'm very excited. Um, Hopefully that all works out. Although that is also terrifying. (laughs) of like oh my god I have to sell one house and move into another one and um also but with that my realtors who have been a big part of this podcast if you go back to the very beginning which I don't recommend oh my god I don't even want to listen to those episodes nothing against them but that's just see that's me and my damage but all the wait a minute episodes at the first three months of this podcast so whatever episodes starting probably like five through 20 something, I guess the wait a minute episodes with Tim and Chris, um, they helped me do my kitchen renovation. They were on the beginning of my podcast and now they're my realtors, <laughs> um, because they're also landlords and realtors and, and stuff like that. So that's been really cool that like, you know, they're my friends and they've been a part of all this too, and can like see me going through all of this and, um, have taken me you know, to some houses that were like super sketch. There was a house, if you're in Cincinnati in Norwood, I am definitely think it was haunted. N- no lie, I came home and saged myself before I came into my house. <laughs> like there was bad vibes in this place. So like, uh, um, I'm curious to see if somebody sells that because that thing definitely probably needs um, 
yeah, a home cleansing or a, 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 a like I'm trying to think of what's the, you know, what I'm talking about, but they didn't poltergeist, um, <laughs> like where you just, whatever. Anyway, I'm spending too much time on that. So that's been really cool too. So if you've been listening that long or, um, care to listen back to those episodes, um, it's cool that like, that those people are still a part of my life and helping me on my, um, journey moving forward. So it's that I've got, so, (laughs) um, you know, divorce last year after being together 18 years, also the massive career change, you know, that happened for me, uh, leaving radio at the end of 2019 and trying to figure out my new sort of career path and figuring that out the past two years, but then also the job that I have now. So I started this new job, which is amazing. And I love it so much. Like, I can't even tell you how much I love this freaking job. Um, it's amazing. And everyone at the Cincinnati nature center is awesome. Um, I know I had a lot of people are like, what are you actually doing there? I'm doing fundraising. Um, so if you want to donate to the nature center, let your girl know, (laughs) but it's been awesome. Like the past couple days I've been hiking for work. Like they're like, yeah, schedule an hour out every day and go hike. I'm like, okay. Um, which again, like working on mental health and physical health of like being out in nature and like, there's just so much cool stuff going on there. Um, like last week I went, they had a foraging dinner, so they forage food and they do these hikes too. They show you like what food you can forage. And then I went to this dinner and then you got to make it and then eat it. It was so super cool. Like I just can't wait to like learn so much stuff. It's like, it's just amazing. So I'm like, you know, new relationship status, new job status, new house status. And like everybody that I've told that I've just met are like, this is so exciting. <laughs> They're like, we're so excited for you. And I'm like, I'm excited too. But I'm like, I'm trying to get past the like terrifying parts because it is, it's like, whoa, this is a lot. Like it is all fantastic and it's so great. And I'm so happy to share all those things, but it is a lot of big changes at once. And, um, I also started a trilogy. So I'm like, I have a new gym now, which I'm also loving. So I'm going to trilogy a few times a week as much as I can. like, as I'm trying to figure out new job and new schedules. And then now I'm just going to be like moving and stuff. So that's going to be a little funky, but like, man, getting my butt kicked. It feels good. And it's such a fun, positive environment. So if you're like looking for any sort of group personal training, not me as a trainer at all. Um, like I loved my time as a personal trainer. I loved my clients, but I don't want to be a personal trainer anymore. That's just not my thing. So that was like something I was glad that I experienced and I did, but that's something where I'm like, I would just rather work out with people. (laughs) Like, can we just work out together and joke around? So, um, I'm really enjoying that too. So that's also new for me. Um, which is, I've not, you know, been like had my own personal trainer in years. So that's been really cool. And, um, just trying to work on my own health, which be completely brutally honest with you. I'm really like trying to stay positive about it. Cause again, I know I'm going through all these changes, but I, um, have a jacket that I have that I wear all the time and it was a big deal for me. So when I was in Oregon, Um, that's where I lived before I moved to Cincinnati that I was, I'm like, I just want, you know, I want some like outdoorsy gear because I like hiked so much, but I also had no money (laughs) because that stuff is expensive. And I'm like, I just want like a nice like North face jacket because at the time, like they weren't selling them at like TJ Maxx. Um, and I had like this gift card to go to this like outdoor store and I'm like, like, I just want it in a smaller size. Like I'd just be happy at that time where I'm like, I would just feel like so good to like be in this smaller size. Um, the same thing again, I'm saying smaller, I'm not saying smallest. Um, um, so then what I had, you know, obviously previously lived in and I got it and I was so hyped and I'm like, this is like, this is where like, I hope I stay. And for the first time that was 2013, no 2014, because I moved to Cincinnati in 2015. So that was the, or that's when I got it. And so the first time since then, like I was hiking yesterday and I'm like, I'm not sure if this bad boy will zip up all the way. And I'm like, okay. So this is the first time in my own personal weight loss journey, which have like, uh, you know, started for me in New Year's 2012, that I'm like, I've gotten to a point where I'm like, 
uh, this jacket isn't really fitting me anymore. And I'm like, not that it all has to be up my, about my size, but I also don't feel super great in my body either. Um, but I'm also PMSy, so that also has a factor to say in. But I'm like, okay, yeah, it's time to <laughs> move past some of the chaos, hopefully have some peace and really like focus on my health again, really be focusing on my nutrition, focusing on my exercise because I love those things. Like I obviously love those things. I have this podcast. So um, I feel like those things were kind of things that did take more of a backseat as all this other kind of fires were coming up where I'm like, I'm I'm taking care of myself the best that I can in this moment, but it's not the, like the the best I have felt or that I know how good I could feel, but it's also giving myself grace, not beating myself up, trying to be in a different headspace than I have been in the past and not always being like you have to be skinnier because it's not. I just want to feel good and feel healthy. With that being said though, the stuff I've been doing at Trilogy, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, hey, I haven't worked out like this in a long time and I'm like, I feel strong as hell. I'm like, I still got it. <laughs> so I'm like, the, you know, I'm like, it's there. It's just a lot rustier. There's just some layers of rust on top. So... I'm really excited moving forward, even though I have this bunch of exciting, cool changes that I'm like, I feel like going into this next chapter, I can get back to these things I really love. Like, I mean, I love hiking and I love walking um, and I'm excited about um, where my new house is going to be. One of the reasons I wanted to live in this area because it's way more walkable and it's bikeable. So I bought a bike last year, but where I live on the west side it's not very bikeable at all. If you're in Cincinnati and you're familiar with the West side, it is not very bikeable. So I'm like, and it sucked because I'm like, I have to drive a half hour to get on a bike trail, which like the, I know it's not called the Loveland bike trail. I forget the other name of it, but the Loveland bike trail, like that trail's badass. But for me right now, I got to drive a half hour to hop on it. And I'm like, I got to drive an hour to ride my bike. Like that kind of defeats the purpose for me a little bit. I'm getting the exercise, but that also seems aggressive. So I'm excited for, again, once these transitions are kind of played out that I'm like, okay, I'm going to be, it's going to be summer. It's going to be nicer outside. I can bike um, more often. I can walk more often. I can hike at work. Um, so, and being active in the ways that I really love and then also be going to Trilogy. So I'm also going, getting strong and I'm getting strength training and I'm like, I love all of those things. And I'm like really excited that those are kind of coming back into my life and not because I feel like I have to be skinnier or because I'm beating myself up or terrorizing myself because my jacket doesn't fit the same. But it's like, no, I'm excited to do those things. And I know I feel really good when I do them. Um and then also it's like, I mean, I've been doing awesome with the clean eats meals where I do bad <laughs> is outside of those. Like during the day, I am crushing. I'm eating a healthy breakfast. I'm eating healthy snacks. I'm drinking lots of water. I am drinking kombucha. I'm eating my clean eats meals. It's just at night that I will just be like, I feel like eating a bunch more food because it's life is rough and that's where like emotions come in. And that is an, a really old pattern for me of like, how do I feel better through strong emotions, which I talked about in the, the last diary episode I did like two episodes ago, of like binge eating. So it goes into those, you know, I'll get, get into emotions and I'm just sitting here <laughs> thinking through stuff and I'm like, I, I want to eat. That's how I want to numb out. And so that's the stuff that's kind of been, you know, that's not been great with my nutrition, but, um, but I know exactly what I'm doing. And again, it's not that I have to be like strong arm myself into something different, but I'm like, it also doesn't make me feel great. And I don't want to not, feel good. And so I think that's the difference from where I've been in the past and where I'm at right now is I just want to feel really good in my body. Um, especially as my body is getting older that I'm like, man, I really got to take good care of, of my body and, um, you know, in the best ways that I can. But I also, again, have to give myself some grace through some big like life changes and, 
you know, if that's the if that's the worst that comes out of it, that is not so bad at all, right? Like, oh my God, what a champagne problem and what a like blessed life I have to be like, oh, the worst thing that's happened is my jacket kind of doesn't fit. <laughs> Boo hoo. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, you know how those things like all live in our heads in different ways and um and so what seems like might be a minor problem to one person is a major problem to someone else. And you have to see everybody where they're at. And so that's just kind of where, where I'm at with that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, also just with the podcast, I, I mean, I do want to uh, keep it going and do the best that I can. I'm always up open for suggestions. Um, you can always email me Amanda at amandavalentinebites.com. And I have asked, uh, my friends. So Matt, a trilogy, just because there's so many badass people that go there. Um, sorry, hold on. I gotta go. <coughs> I'm not editing that out either. Um, <laughs> hold on. I need to drink water now. It was the crying that got me. But anyway, <clears throat> I know he's got so many amazing people there and knows so many amazing people. I'm like, hey, man, if you want to hop in and do some podcast episodes and highlight the people that I don't have the bandwidth to come in, out and interview, dude, do whatever you want. Have some badass conversations. And I said the same thing to my friend Lindsay, Lindsay Bonadonna, who has done the walking meditations and who is opening her own amazing store in Wyoming, Ohio called B. Um that is super, super exciting. I was like, you meet so many cool people. And if you want to hop on here and record a podcast or do a walking meditation or talk to somebody like have at it, like I want to listen to that. And one of the things I told Lindsay about where I'm like, Hey, I want to just, you know, have some, some friends do some podcasts in here. I'm like, I used to love listening to podcasts so much, which is one of the reasons I wanted to do one. And I'm like, and I don't listen to podcasts anymore. And that kind of bums me out. And I'm like, I think it'd be exciting for me to want to listen to my own podcast. <laughs> so if somebody has like a cool idea or somebody they want to chat with, um, you know, my, like those two guys, because they're, I think they're so awesome and know so many amazing people. I'm like, hop in here and do this thing. And I'm like, and I'm going to be excited to listen to my own podcast and I'm going to learn some stuff that I didn't know before. So keep a keep an ear out. So there might be some of those episodes coming out too, just to um, for me kind of breathe some some fresh air um, into the podcast and have some just different perspectives and some different voices. So I'm really excited uh, about that personally and see how that kind of kind of plays out. And I also have met some really cool people, um, especially um, where through working through the the nature center. Then I'm like, oh my god, you got to come on my podcast. We got to talk about all these cool things. So, yeah, I feel like as the some of the hopefully <laughs> some of the craziness um, of these big crazy changes kind of settles down a little bit, um, gives me a little bit more like headspace and uh, to really do some really cool stuff on this podcast that, I mean, I feel like from the moment I've started this podcast, I've always felt frustrated that I'm like, I'm not doing more or there's so many cool things that I want to do. And then I just feel handcuffed. I'm like, I just don't have the time or the resources to do them. And then for me, I'll beat myself up and be like, well, your podcast sucks because you're not doing all this cool stuff. And so that's just me. And that's just me being my own bully. Um, but I always want to like grow and do better. So, um, I will always continue to try to do that. And that's where it's like, if you have any suggestions of things that you want to hear, you think will be helpful. That is seriously so helpful for me to give me some guidance of, you know, what you want to hear. Um, give me some ideas of people to talk to or topics to have. Again, like that is just really incredibly helpful. So if you ever feel like reaching out, um, Amanda at AmandaValentineBites.com or on Instagram at You Can Pound This. And I also just really want to thank everyone that reached out to me that after the last episode, they're like, oh, you know, about me quitting this podcast where it was like, hey, take care of you, do what you got to do. But, you know, I love the podcast and that I mean, is so, so meaningful to me. Like that was, that was awesome. And that was <laughs> that was amazing and, and very helpful because I mean, like right now I'm just sitting in an empty room talking to myself. So it's hard to know who's on the other side listening, which could be anybody. And so I think that it's, 
it's helpful to like, you know, hear back sometimes, which is why I liked having like a live podcast event and I would like to do more events or at least more in-person stuff. Um, so like you can, I can like interact. I like interacting with people, um, which by the way, if you ever come out to the nature center, send me a message on Instagram or something and let me know that you're out there. And if I'm, if I'm free, like I'll come out and hike a trail with you or show you around or show you some cool spots. So I'm happy to do that sort of stuff also. And I just have like so many ideas that, um, that like my boss just gave me like these giant post-it notes today. She's like, just keep, start keeping track of all of your ideas. And I'm like, Ooh, fun. <laughs> Cause I got a bunch. We can do lots of fun stuff. And so, um, yeah. So help me, uh, help me along with that. And then oh, well, I was going to talk about something else too. And I forgot I should probably take notes before I just start rambling into a microphone and crying. Um, I think those are all of the big things going on. Right? Like, oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, just moving. No, just starting a new job. That's it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think that's it for right now. Um, and then I'm also worried about my, my Grizz dude, Grizzy, my one-eyed cat with the hole in his head. He had so many urinary issues when I adopted him, had a major surgery in 2020 because he almost died. Urinary issues haven't been a problem, and now they're starting to become a problem again, which worries me because he's old. So I feel like that <laughs> is on the horizon of, of uh, the inevitable thing of whenever you, you know, have animals, um, especially when you adopt an older animal that's like busted. So that's kind of in the back of my mind as, as well. And so I'm trying to focus every day on like really... I'm sorry, I forgot to close my email Um, (laughs) of, uh, you know, being present with my animals, appreciating them, snuggling with them. Um, I call it my snugs and hugs. And um, same thing, too, with like within the house I'm in right now. Like I'm just really trying to be very present and uh, aware and um, thankful for for everything um, that this house has given me and try to really like absorb that. So, cause again, I've moved so many times. I can't, I've counted, but I think like total, it was like 18 apartments, um, that I've, I've lived in and that wasn't through college or anything. That was just all through like radio. Um, so I feel like there was places that I loved, especially cities that I loved. And then I left and I'm like, oh, I thought I had all this time to go do this thing. Or I would always be in that place. And then you're just gone. And I'm like, I never did any of those things. I was just just assumed it was going to be there. Um, So I've definitely been more present or more um, aware of that, I guess. I guess it was the same thing. But like, I think I really started focusing on that when I moved to Oregon. Because I moved from Denver, which I loved living in Denver also. But I was like, I was definitely not into hiking as much there as I was in Oregon. I'm like, I am going to appreciate every second that I'm here. I don't know if I'm going to stay here. And I want to make sure that when I leave, I feel like I really took advantage of this place. And I did. So I feel like no regrets there. And I feel like even though I've been in Cincinnati uh, eight years now, I still try to do that of like, if there's something where I'm like, oh, I would like to do that. I'm like, oh, I need to make plans to do that. You just never, you just never know. You never know who will be leaving your life or, um, or if uh, unexpected changes come up. Of uh, that's just kind of a, a lesson that I've learned that I try to live by. Um, oh, this was another thing I, I was going to bring up. This is what I was trying to remember before. Um, I also got a message. I don't know if anybody wants me to share names, so I'm not from someone um, talking about leaving their job and making that jump, and uh, you know, um, sharing with me because I've done that too, and. I actually just had a conversation with a radio friend this week who um, I was in chats with because he's like he was up for a radio job not in Cincinnati and was like, oh, I threw your name out there to be my co-host. And I'm like, oh, OK, <laughs> I'm like, that's cool. But I don't know if that's going to work of um, talking about like leaving the industry and making such a big change at the age that we're at, which is 40. And so um of just like the fear of making that change after you've built something. And I'm like, yeah, it's hella scary. 
and it's funny that I'm like a half hour into this and this is when I bring this up because this is what I want to like name this transformations for <laughs> is that, you know, I, I started this podcast with the transformation of like weight loss and health and wellness and totally, but it's also just been transformation of really moving into a space that feels right for me and trusting myself and making those big, scary changes. Um, just, I think even with my health and wellness journey, I'm like, this doesn't feel like authentically who I am anymore. Being in this body, being this mindset doesn't feel like what I'm meant for. This doesn't feel like me. I got to change that. And I got to go through a process, whatever I got to do to something that feels more like me. And I feel like it's been that way with jobs and stuff like that the past several years of like making big, scary changes. Cause it feels like, I feel like I've, this doesn't fit anymore or this isn't where I'm moving forward to. And that was a big, big, scary change for, for me to leave the radio industry because it's what I had built since I was a teenager. It was all I ever wanted to do. And I moved all around and built this career and was making, finally making good money. And I'm like, I'm going to walk away from this now. <laughs> and then they're like, how about some more money to stay? And I'm like, no, I'm still going to leave. Um, just to be like, I want to like do something else. I want to build something else. I'm not really sure exactly what that is, but I want to find something that feels more authentic to my future rather than doing more of the same. And making that big, huge, scary jump is really scary. And you take, I mean, for me, big fat pay cut. So it's like, okay, well, let me not have my health insurance now. Let me uh, live off of savings now. Um, and let me just try to navigate where I'm going. Um, when really I have no other job skills other than being a DJ and a sandwich artist at Subway. (laughs) And I worked at a Casey's too. Um, I also chalked ball fields when I was really young. So there's that. Um, but you know what I mean? So like, it's making that transformation of like, okay, well, how do I build something else? And then also, just being in other, the other jobs that I've done since then of like being a personal trainer where I'm like, I really want to learn from this and I want to try it. And I'm like, not that there's anything bad about it. I'm like, this just does not fit me. Like, this is great, but like, this is not, this is not long term. This was great as a learning experience and I got to move on. And so it's like things like that, where it's like making these other changes of like, okay, well, I'm going to leave this position and I want to find something else that matches more of who I am in this moment. And then I went to the YMCA, which is great and matched who I was in that moment. Lots of growing and learning experiences. And that like had brought to me where I am now, where I'm like, this seems like really like, you know, who I am and where I'm going and just, you know, just trying to really like visualize and feel like what feels good for me and what I'm going to do. And I think career, I'm kind of focused on that just because that's where you spend so much of your time. I am not independently wealthy. So <laughs> I spend a lot of time working like we all, like not we, not we all, but a lot of us do. And so it's like, that's important to me. It's important for me also to have meaningful work, which is why I like this podcast and things I've done. Like this is meaningful for me. I feel like I can help people. I feel like Me sharing the crap that I'm going through makes people feel like not alone. And that's helpful in some way other than it get it out of my head of like, you're just turning on a mic and bitching of like, no, this can be helpful. It's helpful for me when I hear those things or talking to doctors and talking to nutritionists and talking to mental health professionals. Like those things are helpful and that's meaningful, purposeful work. And that means a lot to me and, and what, what I do. So it's, you know, been finding my way through that. So I think making those sorts of, um, transformations are, are huge. Like it's, it's so hard. It's so hard and scary. (laughs) And so, but I mean, that's one of those things too, where it's, everyone's on their own journey and you got to be where you're going to be. And the time is going to happen whenever you, you feel it is best. So the person that sent me that message this week, I thought that was just amazing of like, I'm going to try a whole career change and let's like, let's do this big scary thing. And like, let's see what happens because it feels fulfilling. And I told them that I'm like, life is too short not to have like joy within that. And a job can totally suck all the joy out of your life. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, man, 
one bad job or bad coworkers or being in that bad space and then you're there eight plus hours a day. I mean, that affects your life a lot. So that's also one of those things of like, why am I not losing weight? Well, what does your day to day look like? Are you stressed out or like you getting like stabbed in the back constantly and gossiped about and everything like that? Well, yeah, your body is holding on to that. (laughs) <laughs> and so you might not be reaching your goals. I mean, those things like are a really big deal. So um, I'm also proud of myself for making those big, scary changes of just trying to feel like, hey, man, I got this one life and I don't know how long I'm going to be here. You know, just like Rizzy. I don't know how long my dude's going to be here and I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So I'm just trying to make it the best that I can in this moment to what feels right. So if I do leave tomorrow, then I'm like, man, I really, I really did it the best that I could. Um, I feel like I can, you know, be an old lady, whatever old looks like for me, let's say 75. I don't know. I don't know if I want to like live to 90. (laughs) I don't know if my knees could do it (laughs) Um, and be like, man, I, there wasn't a point in my life where I was like, man, I I wish I would have tried that. I wonder what road that would have taken me down. I'm like, no, I took it. And that was one of the reasons when I was leaving the radio station, I told them, like, I'm like, I don't want to look back at this time and be like, I, I, I could have done something else. I could have tried it. Like, at least I know I tried it. If it doesn't work and it sucks, then I'm like, at least I know I like gave it a shot. You know what I mean? And I just feel like those things, although very hard and brutal, <laughs> have always like, paid off in so many ways. I've met so many amazing people and I learned so many life lessons. So then when I run into those sort of things later, it makes it easier. So I don't know. I'm definitely a person that will jump right in the fire. And I know that's not for everyone, but that's a transformation for me. And I feel like, man, who I am right now, if you introduced me to like to to me when I first started this podcast at the beginning of 2018, those are really different people. And not in any sort of good or bad way of just like just a a lot of life in there. Let's even just take COVID out of there because I feel like we're all different people after going through that. That, you know, of like, man, the stuff that I've worked through on my own, my own, especially mental health, mental and physical health of like, I just feel like such a different person and I handle things in such a different way. And I am proud of those things. Not that I'm perfect. Nobody is. And, but I, I mean, I look back at just like behaviors that I've had before in the past. I'm like, oh my God, these people only knew me as that person. They probably think I'm such a bitch. (laughs) I'm like, well, I mean, I can't take that back. I mean, and that's who I was at that time. And I can, now I can label of like, well, I had those behaviors because I just didn't know how to, to deal with stuff. And I dealt with it in my own way. And sometimes that's harmful to other people. And I've sat in all of that and been like, well, is that how I want to act moving forward? It's not. So catch myself whenever I feel some of those feelings and be like, all right, let's sit in this yucky, disgusting feeling and let's see if we can work through it and come up with a better outcome. Um, Which again, sometimes it works and sometimes you binge eat (laughs) for me. Um, And sometimes I was today, brutal honesty, was very proud of myself for not flipping somebody off because that is normally a very automatic reaction for me in traffic that, oh, these fingers come flying, no problem. And somebody honked at me for no damn reason. This chick sucked. And I just looked at her and I did not flip her off. And I'm like, look at you. You didn't flip her off, even though she totally deserved it. (laughs) So like, hey, Baby steps, baby steps, little moves, little moves. I'm proud of myself. And I've been thinking too, um, like Lindsay brought this up of like, she'll give people a thumbs down instead of a middle finger. And I'm like, you should like, you should try doing that. And I'm like, but that is not the, that's not the pathway that is burned into my brain. That the pathway is middle fingers flying. (laughs) Somebody does something stupid. So not doing anything at all is, is a good move for me but I think the thumbs down is kind of hilarious so to me like that will just make me giggle and diffuse the situation so we'll see we'll see where I progress from there (laughs) 
man, this episode went all over the map, right? <laughs> I guess that they kind of totally do whenever I'm just sitting here rambling by myself. Um, and that we go from me crying about this podcast and to I didn't flip somebody off today. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, I guess that's it because this is long now. That's what she said. But again, can't thank you enough for listening to this podcast. I appreciate it so much. I am very excited um, for the future and to see where things go. Not that everything is going to be perfect and puppies and kittens and sunshine and rainbows, but um, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling positive. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to keep moving forward. And I'm so excited that you're on this journey with me. And I guess that's it for now. So later, homies. AmandaValentineBites.com.